Hi, my name is Luke Dixon with Civil Tracker. Today we're going to talk about mission planning. This is one of the most important things you'll do before heading out to fly your drone for any mapping mission. As we've always said, you need three things to do mapping. You need the drone, you need a really good autopilot, and you need Civil Tracker to turn all those images into an ortho photo and terrain model. So this is going to focus on that autopilot app and how to plan that mission. So today the autopilot app we're going to look at is DroneLink. DroneLink is one of my favorites, especially when I use the Mini 2 or the original Mini drone, just because it uh, it's so simple and efficient. So we're going to walk through the whole process. First, uh, starting at DroneLink's homepage. If you haven't signed up yet, you're going to have to sign up and do that by going to the pricing page. And through that, You'll decide whether the hobbyist plan or the business plans are right for you. Either way, you need to make sure that you include one that has mapping missions in it. Otherwise, you'll be uh, unable to do the automated missions required for mapping. I already have a account, so I'm going to sign into my account and walk through the steps of configuring a mapping mission. First thing I'm going to do is hit the create button in the bottom left and I'm going to pick a map plan. Now, the next thing that it asks me to do is to select a takeoff location for the new plan. So I'm going to pick a, uh, a location that's reasonably well known to me that I've flown before and just walk through the different steps on how I would go about planning that. So in this site, there's a lot of good takeoff and landing spots. I'm going to pick something that's a little bit out of the way and up on high. This map's a little bit old, but I'm gonna pick a takeoff location from here. And as soon as I click that button, DroneLink will drop a pre-planned template size map. Now, obviously that doesn't work. It's not exactly what I want on a map. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is start dragging around and changing the size of this. So I can grab any of these white corners, drag them, and the plan will automatically resize. The white is, the approximate boundary of what's going to be collected and the, the light blue is where the drone will actually fly. I always say it's more important to pay attention to where the drone will fly than the white boundary. So here uh, I've got this area pretty well covered. I might want to drag it out a little further on the west side to improve that, make sure I get right to the edge. I'm pretty happy with the coverage there. Now within my plan, I can give it a name and call it demo map and jump in and take a look at it. Here on the left, if I click on the map and click the advanced, I'm going to go, I'm going to go through a few different parameters for you. So right now this is selected for the mini two. If I had a mini or pretty much any drone can change that. And the key here is every drone in general has a different camera. So you need to pick the right drone in order to make sure that this is planned for, for your drone. Use uh, Phantom 4, pardon, V2. But for this one, we'll stick with the Mini 2. And I'll just go step by step through all the settings. So the altitude is set to 86.9 meters, which gives me a resolution on the ground of about three centimeters. The higher I fly, the lower the resolution. The lower I fly, the higher the resolution. Um, the time, amount of time and effort required is also uh, consistent as well. So it doesn't always make sense to just fly lower and get better resolution. You want to fly at the right height for your project. In this case, I like this altitude and this resolution. That's good. But I am going to change the side overlap up a little bit to 75 and I'm going to keep the next pieces consistent. Uh, capture mode will stay the same. Photo type stays the same. The max speed will stay the same. Flight direction and pattern normal. And I'll change a few of these in a couple minutes. But this is what I would call my standard mapping configuration. It's I like to call it the lawnmower pattern. We're basically flying back and forth, covering the whole area with a good amount of overlap. And this will generate an excellent ortho image and a reasonable digital elevation model. 
I'm going to click here on the left and look at the mission estimate. The total time to fly this mission is 33 minutes and it'll take 500 photos. In reality, when you get out there, that'll be a bit longer uh, because you're going to be ferrying back and forth from where you take off and land. You're going to be changing out batteries. You can probably get about 13 to 14 minutes of mapping time per battery with the Mini. So this is going to be a two, maybe three mission a battery mission, pardon me. Now, a lot of our customers want the best accuracy and the best quality they can get from the Mini 2. And there's the best way to improve this and what I'll call the high accuracy mapping plan versus the normal mapping plan like this is to change from a lawnmower pattern to a grid pattern. So down here where it says pattern, I'm gonna switch that from normal to grid. And that drone is now gonna fly both ways. It'll fly essentially two lawnmower patterns that are turned at 90 degree angles. And that's a lot more flight time. In this case, our flight time has essentially doubled, which makes sense, we're flying it both ways. There are a couple things we can do to lower that back down, uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. The second piece that helps is now we're flying everything in a grid pattern, we're gonna also change the gimbal angle. Minus 90 means that the gimbal is pointed straight down. We're gonna change that from minus 90 to minus 75, which is just a little bit of an oblique uh, angle. So instead of straight down, it's pointed forward a little bit. And what this means now is the drone is crisscrossing grid on the whole site, and it's, the camera's pointed a little bit forward. And that does two things. That helps us to generate a better surface model 3D model of the site that's more accurate. It also helps with the camera uh, accuracy. Every time that a flight is processed by Civil Tracker, Civil Tracker determines the camera parameters, essentially calibrates that camera. And flying in this way helps to optimize the camera calibration. And a good camera calibration is critical to high accuracy data. So this will not only generate a better 3D model, it'll generate a more accurate 3D model because of the camera calibration. So that's why I call this the high accuracy flight plan. There is one or two more things that we can do to tweak this plan. Because we're flying both ways, we can reduce the side overlap a little bit, especially if this is a terrain such as a landfill or a construction site. Uh, with not a whole lot of buildings, we can reduce the side overlap. So I'm gonna drop it down from 75% side overlap to 65%. And the reason I'm gonna do that is just to reduce my flight time a little bit. So having done that, let's see what that does to our flight time. So that's reduced it to about 46 minutes, which is essentially halfway in between the original 34 minutes and the one hour and seven minutes is about halfway in between. So it's about a 50% increase in just doing a traditional lawnmower pattern. But if you want high accuracy, it's really worth doing the grid pattern versus a lawnmower pattern. There's a few more settings in here, which we don't necessarily need to play with. There's the speed. I generally fly the drones at the, the max and default speed here. However, if you're in a low light condition or if you are flying lower altitude, perhaps at 30 to 50 meters, 100 to 150 feet, you're gonna to wanna to slow that down quite a bit. However, I don't usually map at low altitudes, so I usually leave that at full speed. So that's it for now. The next step after this is to get out and fly the mission, and we'll show you how to do that as well. Uh, in that case, we're gonna use DroneLink's native app on an iPhone or an Android. Check back in, and we'll go fly this mission in the field. Thank you very much.